Hey, I'm Doug. Welcome to Backcountry Pilgrim, a channel all about hiking, camping, backpacking, and the gear that goes with it. I made a video at the beginning of the year with some other guys, and we started this new gear for 2022 tag that went around. And in it, I detailed some of the gear that I planned on using for 2022. But as of this first week in April, I need to go back on some of the things I said because I have gone through a major gear purge and purchase, and I wanted to talk to you about it, let you know what gear I will actually be using going forward from this spring on, but also talk about why I did what I did. Those of you that have been with the channel from early on know that I have gone through a lot of backpacks, but what might not be as obvious is that I've managed to collect quite a few pieces of other gear, like tents and stoves and sleep pads and things like that, and I recently realized that there's just a lot of gear that I have that I'm not using, but moreover, I didn't really have the exact gear that I really wanted. After doing numerous gear tests and really trying to dial my kit in, I had a pretty solid idea of what I would have if money were no object. But as I've said before, I live in California. Strike. I have four kids. <laughs> and I work for a church. So money is a pretty important consideration for me. And although I might have really liked to have, you know, some of the top of the line gear, it just wasn't going to happen. But two things happened recently that changed my mind on my gear purchasing philosophy. Number one, I recently went on a quick overnight backpacking trip to Point Reyes, and I was using all of the gear that I thought I'd be using for 2022 and discovered that some of it wasn't really what I liked. This became especially apparent when I first tried out one of my new tents. I had the Wilderness Technology Air Light 2. It was a freestanding two-person tent that weighed in at about 43 ounces. Now, I had got a great deal on this that I found on the Facebook Backpacking Flea Market page, a page I would definitely recommend taking part in if you don't already. I'll put a link to it in the description of the video below. But I got this tent after having some mishaps with some non-freestanding trekking pole tents that I was trying to pitch in the Sierra Nevada mountains in the granite, and I just decided I didn't want the hassle anymore. The trouble was I didn't like where the door was. It was up in the front, so you had to kind of crawl over all your stuff in order to get in. The vestibule was so small as to be nearly useless. And so although I really liked many features of the tent, the overall experience wasn't that great. Now, ever since I got more serious about my hiking and backpacking a few years ago when I started this channel, the tent that has consistently been rated up at the top, if not the very top of most backpacking gear lists, has been the Big Agnes Copper Spur HVUL2. The Copper Spur is also a freestanding tent, weighs in at about 49 ounces. It comes with two side doors, which I love, it's got two huge awnings, it's got a loft, and it's a 52 by 88 inch footprint, which was quite a bit bigger than the Wilderness Technology. Both of them were 40 inches tall, and yet the Copper Spur only weighed a few more ounces. Now the trouble with the Copper Spur is that it is a pretty expensive tent, and if you wanna really take care of it and get the footprint, it's even more expensive. So because of this, I did not have one, and I figured, well, I'm just gonna have to stick with my budget tent. The other thing that I had wanted to change up with my gear loadout was my sleep pad. Now, a number of years ago, I got a great deal on a non-insulated, regular-sized Nemo Tensor. Now, this was an incredibly comfortable sleep pad. I really had no problems with it as far as it went. However, it was non-insulated, which meant it was kind of limiting as far as the seasons that it would really work well in. And also, because of its size, I was discovering that as a side and stomach sleeper, I was just constantly finding body parts coming off the pad, touching the ground, and getting cold. So I decided that I wanted a larger pad, and I also wanted one that was insulated. And like I said in my earlier video, I picked up the Thermarest Neo Air X-Lite. Once again, I found a great deal, but this time it was for a brand new pad on Amazon. Further, the Neo Air X Lite was the long, wide version, so I was going to have plenty of room to toss and turn. Now, compared to my Nemo Tensor, it seemed like this was going to be a huge upgrade, but as soon as I took it out of the package, I noticed that what everybody says about this pad is true. This thing is loud. 
Taking it out of the package, it sounded like I was crumpling up a bag of potato chips, and that has to do with the way Thermarest insulates that particular pad, and I just knew almost immediately this is not going to work. Now, the obvious solution to this problem would have been to get the Nemo Tensor in a long, wide, and insulated version. That pad is actually three inches thick, has the same R value as the Neo Air X Lite. It's actually a little bit longer of a pad, has an incredibly efficient pump sack. It is completely quiet and extremely comfortable. But guess what? Now, brand new, the Neo Air X Lite is actually a little bit more expensive than the Nemo Tensor, only by about $10, not enough to make a decision over. But because I had got that great deal on the Amazon sale, I just didn't really feel like it was a necessary expense. The second thing that changed my thinking about gear was that I got invited on a backpacking trip to the Grand Canyon of the Tuolumne in Yosemite coming up this spring. Now, the problem with backpacking in Yosemite is that you've got to bring... One of these. Yosemite requires bear canisters for anybody spending the night in the bat country, and the one that I had before, my little like one or two day can, simply wasn't going to do the job. So I had to break out my Bear Vault BV500, and I realized pretty quickly that this thing was not going to fit very well in any of the backpacks that I had. The backpack that I had for multi-nights was the Granite Gear Crown X60, but in the mass drop version. I got this pack in a smoking deal on drop.com back when they used to carry camp supplies. This thing came in at 40 ounces, but you could strip it down to 34. It was about 40 liters internally, 20 in the pockets. It was framed, it had a removable hip belt, a lid that could come off and form a fanny pack, and let's face it, it just looked cool. The problem with this pack is that when you actually really got it loaded up with weight and started to get in the upper 20s, low 30 pounds, it started to become pretty uncomfortable. So although the pack had some really cool features, it just wasn't going to be a good heavy carry pack, at least not good enough for this old back right here. So all of that to say this, I'm sitting here looking at my gear and I've got several backpacks and I've got several tents and I've got several sleep pads, but all in all, I knew what I wanted and I didn't have it. And the reason I didn't have what I really wanted was because what I really wanted was expensive. And I had convinced myself that it just wasn't wise financially for me to spend that much money on backpacking gear. But then I had a sort of epiphany, a vision, if you will, burnt across the sky. And the epiphany was that if I had not slowly built up this large collection of budget gear, I probably could have afforded to get what I really wanted in the first place. Now, of course, it's a lot easier to make a bunch of small purchases rather than one or two really big ones. But now that I had all of that stuff, I asked myself, would I trade what I had now for what I really wanted? And the answer was a resounding yes. I don't really like having all of that gear. I don't like having to make a million decisions every time I want to go on a backpacking trip. I would rather just have the perfect loadout for a day trip or a backpacking trip, not have to put much thought into it because I already knew that I had exactly what I wanted ready to go. So I decided to do an experiment. I was going to try to sell all of my budget gear off, all of the things that I would trade for the perfect gear loadout, and just see how much money I could bring in. And it turned out to be a fantastic success. I sold tents. I sold stoves. I sold sleep pads. I sold so much stuff out of my gear closet that I made enough money to get pretty much exactly what I wanted. To begin with, let's talk about stoves. When I was doing most of my gear research and stoves, it basically seemed to come down to two or three different choices. And for me, it was either the budget version, the BRS 3000, a very popular little super lightweight stove. It only cost 17 bucks. It weighed less than an ounce. And it was otherwise pretty unremarkable. And that's the one I got because it was the budget version. And it was also very light. Now, the BRS 3000 has been fine for me. But in the back of my head, what I really wanted was this. This is the Soto Windmaster. This stove weighs two additional ounces and more importantly costs an additional $50. However, it brings water to a boil faster. In doing so, it uses less fuel. It also has a much better pressure regulator, its own windscreen, and a built-in igniter. And what that means is that I wouldn't necessarily have to carry an additional lighter 
and now we're kind of back to being at about the same weight. Basically, the Soto Windmaster is just a much better stove. It's going to perform a lot better in wind. It's going to perform a lot better in quick boiling. It's going to perform a lot better if you need some subtlety built into your flame size. And although I really wanted this, it just seemed way too expensive for a stove. However, now that I had a bunch of free money lying around from selling off my other gear, I could afford it, and I got it. I also returned my Thermarest Neo Air X Lite and went ahead and got the Nemo Tensor version of the same thing. This pad is a little bit longer, it is thicker, it is more comfortable, and it is substantially quieter. Plus, the pump sack is unbelievable. I can inflate this pad with three breaths. And those of you who backpack and know what it's like to be sitting in your tent dizzy and trying not to pass out after blowing your sleep pad up will know how important that is. So far, I've been super happy with the Nemo Tensor. Now, I did not trade in my UGQ Bandit Quilt because it is pretty much perfect. I love it. But I did upgrade my sleep system by one more degree by picking up this. This is also made by Nemo. It's called the Philo instead of the Pillow. Now, this is a blow-up pillow, however, it includes a baffled foam insert inside, and so while it does crush up pretty small, it is a lot more pillow-like when you use it. Previously, I had used the Trichology Aleph. It's an air blow-up pillow that kind of feels like a balloon. It only weighs 3.3 ounces, and it comes in at 16 by 12 by 4 and 5x2 packed. Of course, one of the big selling features for me about the Trekology pillow was that it only costs about 16 bucks. The Nemo Philo is $40, weighs 9.2 ounces, gives you a pillow that is 17 by 11 by 3 that crushes down to 6x4. What I like about this pillow is that number one, it's going to work somewhat even if it doesn't inflate. So if you get a rip or something in it and you lose all of your air, the pillow is still going to be fairly comfortable. Also, the covering on this feels just like a pillowcase at home. It's not just putting a t-shirt over a hard plastic balloon like the Trekology pillow. So although it doesn't crush down to small and there is a fairly substantial weight penalty, I want to give this one a try because getting a good night's sleep just makes a huge difference on a backpacking trip, especially when you are going for multi-nights. If I'm going out for three or four days into the backcountry, continual bad sleep is going to seriously affect my performance. All right, that brings me to my big two, the two things that I spent the most money on that are probably some of the most important pieces of gear on the trip, and that is the tent and the backpack. I did indeed pick up the Big Agnes Copper Spur HVUL2. Those of you that own one might say, Doug, that looks a little unusual. That's not what mine looks like. Well, that's because this is the bike pack version. I didn't do a whole lot of research into the difference between them. There seem to be about three important differences. One is that this version of the tent weighs about two ounces less. Second, the way the stuff sacks are configured, you can actually get them in a much smaller package. And that is partially because, number three, the tent poles have additional joints in them. And so they pack into a much smaller package. Package. I was actually fortunate enough to pick this up on the Facebook flea market as well, and the guy was nice enough to throw in the footprint. So I got the bike pack upgraded version of the Copper Spur HVUL2, and I got it for about $100 less than it would have been brand new. All right, last but certainly not least, the piece of gear that I am most excited for going forward here in 2022 is my new backpack. Now, I'm going to do a deeper dive review into all of this gear later, so for now, I'm just going to briefly tell you which pack it is and why I got it, but let me show it to you. This is my custom ULA circuit. Now, I was already familiar with ULA. They are one of several U.S.-based cottage industry companies that make ultralight backpacking gear. However, what I didn't really fully appreciate was how customizable these packs were. When you get on the ULA website and pick your basic pack, there are numerous options, several different things you can do to these packs. And when I called for some advice, I actually got to talk to the co-owner, Peter, and he walked me through some of the decisions I was considering different materials, and different colors, and yes, I did pick this color on purpose. But even beyond the website customizations, you can pretty much have anything done to the pack that you're willing to pay for. So for example, I got this entire cordage section here added to the pack. That's not something that comes with it or is even offered, but because I wanted it and I was willing to pay for it, 
they did it for me. Just to give a quick rundown, comparison of the ULA circuit versus my granite gear, the weight of this pack is about 37 ounces at base. Mine comes in at about 40, 41, so it's about the same weight. However, instead of light aerobic nylon that the granite gear came with, I got mine in X-Pack for its water shedding capabilities and bright orange color. It is also a 40 liter in the body, but you can get an extra 5 to 10 or so with the collar raised. Externally, you've got about 30 liters worth of storage in the Lycra front pocket as well as the oversized side pockets. This is finished off with two large hip belt pockets. This pack has a carbon hoop frame and one aluminum stay so it is a really good load hauler. It also has a removable and adjustable hip belt and all of the straps and cordage you need for any kind of external carry. But I can get the BV500 bear vault inside of here along with my quilt and several other things. And then because of the pocket outside configuration, I'm able to put my external carry stuff pretty much exactly where I want it. And the pack remains incredibly comfortable. Okay, like I said, I'm going to do deeper dive reviews into all of this gear in the future, but for right now, I just wanted to kind of defend my decision to go all in and just purchase the gear that I really wanted. It's a buy once, cry once kind of situation. By dropping this money now, I have the gear that I want. I have no regrets when I'm pulling gear out of the closet and packing it into my pack. I don't have a bunch of extraneous stuff that I never really use anyway. So I've been able to simplify my life as well as increase the quality of my gear, and I did so without really spending any additional money. So I want to be clear, I am not advocating that you just go out and spend as much money as you possibly can on gear. I do think that there is a curve, but what you're looking for is kind of the top of the curve. At what point are you starting to see diminishing returns on your money? At that point, it's probably time to really question if there is some feature of that expensive gear that you absolutely have to have. Now, although I spent a lot on this gear, none of it is at the very top of the price point. Believe me, you can spend a lot more money than I spent on this gear. You could spend a lot more money on just one piece of gear than I spent on all of this gear. But the point is, I found what, for me, is the top of the curve. This is the best stuff that I can get that does what I want it to do, for the amount of money that I am able to spend right now. And as far as gear goes, I couldn't be happier. All right, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it has been informative to you. And if so, would you mind giving it a like and subscribe to Backcountry Pilgrim if you're into hiking, camping, backpacking, and the gear that goes with it. If you also click that bell, YouTube will let you know when new videos come out on this channel. Until next time, I'm Doug. Thank you so much for watching.